Testing, testing, one, two, testing. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First United Methodist Church. It certainly is a, a beautiful, glorious morning to come and worship our one and only true God. And I and, uh, hope if you're visiting here, uh, you're uh, welcome very much to, uh, to sign the pew pads, which we have at the end of the pews, if you don't mind, uh, with your name, address, a, a way to contact you. And also, if you're, even if the members, and I'll remind everyone on this, that, that information actually helps us update emails and phone numbers and all that stuff because the directory is always being uh, updated. So please, please do that for us. Um, I want to make a quick announcement, though, because it may be a little different to, so you don't get confused in the bulletin. Today, we have a special guest speaker, uh, a Gideon speaker, a Mr. Dale Deese. He's a, a former judge, but he's gone into private practice now, and he's going to be bringing the message to us today. And just so you know, uh, you can obviously donate anytime you want, but we'll have a special um, a donation or offering at the next uh, next week's service uh, focused on the, the Gideon. Uh, all ladies are invited to the United Methodist uh, Women's Spring uh, General Meeting and Covered Dish Dinner on Monday, May the 6th at 6.30 in the Fellowship Hall, 6.30 p.m. Uh, bring your favorite dish to share and enjoy the fellowship and entertainment by Dr. Terry and Gloria Hunt. First United Methodist Church will be having a revival each night beginning May the 19th and ending May the 22nd in the Fellowship Hall. The opening music will begin at 6.30 and the worship at 7. Please make plans to attend if at all, if at all possible. Um, also, the Cub Scouts are selling, $5, are selling $5 camp cards, which have discounts at local uh, businesses here in town. And there's more information I understand in the bulletin. If I'm not mistaken, I haven't looked, but if interested, please stop by the church office to purchase one. And thank you for your support. We all know how important uh, the scouts are to, uh, to this community, as well as, as to the, the growth of this church and the families within it. We encourage everyone to sign the pew pads, as I said. Uh, also remember our food banks. Donations and volunteers are always appreciated and needed. Food Bank is the third Saturday of each month, and we prepare the bags on the Friday before at uh, 3 p.m. in the afternoon in the fellowship hall. Please come out and join us. And that's really all the announcements I have. Anyone have anything they want to bring uh, for the attention for the good of everyone? If not, Miss Leslie has some uh, mission comments for us. This is going to be a brief mission moment since we didn't have one this month because the third Sunday was Easter and that service we figured was pretty packed already. So in your bulletin is, a bu is an insert on Project Agape. We have a Sunday school class called the Agape Sunday School class. You're always welcome to come and attend that if you'd like, but it's different than this. This is a project for in Armenia, which is a landlocked country and um, has no way to get things unless they are trucked in by train and stuff like that, which is expensive for them, but that's okay. This is a program that the Western North Carolina Conference and our North Carolina Conference are the supporters of. We are the ones that started it, and we are the only ones that essentially provide money and items for it. We've had work teams, things like that. If you were to look it up, on the internet you'd see some things where our bishop has been there 
and met the children. There's a Christmas program, things like that. One of the things our mission team does is every year we choose areas that we want to send a grant to. This year, Project Agape is one of the grants, is, will receive one of our grants, which will be $1,000, which according to this will buy them a cow. That's not bad. And all the veterinary services needed and all that kind of stuff. So I think that's pretty good. But there's lots to read here. Don't read it while Dale's talking because that's not a good idea. But take it with you and read it. The other mission point I have is in most of the pews, I ran out over here, there are envelopes for adopt an inmate, a dollar. If everybody took one of these and put a dollar in it, it'd be helpful whatever in any case this is an our ongoing mission project and we can always use funds for the adopt and inmate program and if anybody ever has any questions please feel free to call me thank you it's funny that we mentioned armenia i've actually had the pleasure and the privilege of actually doing some work in armenia for the our u.s government and uh, it's almost like going back in time if you've ever been there it's a it's a, it's, a, it's a culture coming up from the Mediterranean and down from, the, from Europe, and it's all mixed, but uh, a lot of poverty, a lot of uh, hand rake, hay cutting, sickle things you see over there uh, alongside uh, other stuff too. So I uh, just uh, keep her request in your mind, and it would be a well-deserved uh, donation. With that, let us turn our heads toward worshiping God.
If you're able and could please stand and join me in our call to worship. Even in the midst of our questions, we will praise the Lord. Even with fears of what might be. We come with faith that is growing in spite of this. Praise, praise God, God in song and dance. Let us offer worship and praise the living God, the risen Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Let everything that breathes, praise, praise God. And our hymn for the day, The Strife is O'er the Battle Done, number 306. Please join me in our unison prayer, life-giving, life-affirming God. We come this morning remembering the joy of Easter while facing realities of this world. Fill us with hope of a new life that resurrection brings. Help us open our hearts to the never-ending, unconditional love of this Easter season. Be with us now in our time of worship and remain with us each and every day as we walk our paths of life in faith. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Good morning. What a beautiful people of Lorenburg First United Methodist Church. So great to greet you on this, this um, glorious day that God has created for us to worship Him in spirit and in truth. On this Easter season morn, you know, a lot of times we look and we think of Easter as just one one event, one day out of the year. But actually, we're Easter people. We're people of the resurrection. How many days are in Lent? Say it again. 40. 
How many days are in Easter? Three, if 360, boy, that's a good answer. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you on the road with me. But how many days is it from Easter to Pentecost? A little, a little bit more. Boy, I'll tell you, boy, I'll just, I was, I was showing off my people, boy, and you let me down. 50 days, 50 days from Easter. The preacher sitting there, he knew it. He was just letting, letting us off. But 50, 50 days. But 50 days of Easter as we celebrate with the Christ candle, the Paschal candle. And so this day, let this day be a reminder to us that we celebrate Easter Sunday not as an event, but Easter should become a lifestyle for us. It should become a way of life that we celebrate as the people of the way, the Easter people, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And so this morning we want to come and it's time in our service that we lift up our concerns and our prayers one for another. And I, I want us to remember those who are all, all of those who are on our prayer list, but especially Jack Castle and uh, Peggy Dean and the family of Ron Morgan. Let us be much in mind uh, for them. And let's also be much in mind for Miss Anna Duncan. Uh, she had back surgery this week as, as well. And so let's, let's be much in, in prayer uh, for them. Let us be mindful of those things around the world that are taking place in, in our church and even in our community. And I know you've heard some of the things that have taken place here in the last couple of days that the Judicial Council has made their decisions and they have upheld the traditional plan uh, in our United Methodist Church and they have uh, voted it as constitutional and also the disaffiliation and so I'm sure I just want to make mention of that we'll have conversation about that later on but I just wanted to wanted to share that with you that as we're moving forward um, seeking to be the disciples that God has called us to be to be faithful to the scriptures to be faithful to the one who was faithful uh, to us. But let's be much in prayer for those around the world uh, this morning because there are lots of pain and hurt around the world. Christ came to alleviate the pain and the suffering and the hurt. And I pray that we as people of the way, people, the resurrection people, that we would be sensitive and that we would also be compassionate and loving toward one another. And so this morning, do you have any other concerns or maybe words of praise and testimony that you'd like to share with the church? Feel free at this time. People of the way have nothing to say. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. Lord, hear our prayer. Amen. Brother Jim. Amen. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what, I, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna plug this in for St. Andrews. Uh, this young man was I mean, he was he was getting ready to be sent to Charlotte and and his mind was on his students. He was saying, I've got to get I've got to get back home. He said, I've got a I've got a final exam to put together. And so St. Andrews, if you're listening, that's a devoted man over there. Amen. Went to see him in the hospital, and that's, that was the first thing he said to me. He said, Preacher, they've told me that I can probably leave from here and go home. <laughs> he said, I've got a test to put together. And he said, it takes me a day and a half to two days to put it together. And so he's a man of uh, tremendous faith, but he's a man of uh, conviction and uh, commitment. And so we thank God that um, the accident uh, was not as serious. Uh, well, it was serious, but not as, not as bad as we uh, thought it might be. And so God is good. It's, it's great that whenever we fall, we can fall into the arms of Christ. Amen. Amen. Are there any others? If there are no others, reach to your right and to your left, and let's take hold of someone's hand and let us go to the Lord united and in one accord. Because we are the family of faith. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day. And God, we thank you for this gift. God, you've given us the gift of community. God, as we come together from all different walks of life. God, we come together with all different um, just theologies, God, and philosophies of life. But, but yet and still, somehow, in some way, God, you mesh it together that we would be a congregation of faith that would come together and love one another despite our differences, despite, Father, those things that sometimes that others would, it would hold us apart. But God, is, it's the differences, Lord, that we have, the differences of opinion that brings us so closer together because we know, God, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And Father, we thank you, Lord, for the diversity of mind that exists here in this congregation. God, you've taken these people, Lord, and all of us and placed us together that we could be a force to be reckoned with in this community, that we could be a force to be reckoned with, God, with the sin in this world and the hurts and the pains that exist in this community. And so, God, we pray and ask, Lord, that you would take us and use us for your kingdom, Father, and for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And now, God, we pray for these concerns that have been lifted. We pray for those that were unspoken as well. God, we pray for mom, Lord. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to bring healing and wholeness, God, upon her body. God, we know that when mom is not well, Lord, it, it just matriculates down into the family, Lord, and Daughters and sons, Father, their hearts and we yearn and, and mourn for the person who gave them life. And, and Father, we just thank you, Lord God, that, Father, we're able to voice that this morning, Father, that we're able to bring it to a community, Father, that would, that would pray with one another, that would lift us up and hold us close and dear to our hearts. And so we pray for Kim and her family. God, we pray for Sister Nancy and her family, Lord. We pray, God, for this, this son and this daughter-in-law who is here. We, we pray, God, traveling mercy upon them, but, but we pray for that son who has been through so much, Father. We just pray and ask, God, that you would continue to undergird him with your strength and with your love. And, God, we praise you for the little small milestones in, in Sister Nancy's life, Lord. We know, God, that she's had the uh, as the old saying goes, a rough road to hoe here in the last few months, Lord. God, we know with the passing of Bo, Lord, we know that, Father, it set off something, God, but yet and still, Father, she's trusting in you and she has her faith and her whole fiber and her being, God, trusting in your grace and your love for her. And God, we thank you for Brother Allen, Lord, and we thank you for his commitment, Father, he inspires me as a pastor to be all that I can be because, God, you're using him, Father, in the, the gifts and the talents and the profession, Lord, that you have placed him in. 
Father, that he was not focused upon himself, but he was focused upon those in whom you had called and placed in his path that, that Father, that he would help them to find the education that they need in this life. And yes, Lord, his body was wrecked, Father, and there, there was pain in his body, but yet and still, he didn't think of himself. He thought of others. He thought of this church. He thought of his students. And God, we thank you. Because God, as he said that morning, he was supposed to teach Sunday school. But God, we, we helped him to understand and to realize that, that God, if you've called him, you've called others and you'll raise them up. And God, we thank you. But now, Father, we just pray and ask, Lord, for all of these concerns. We ask, Lord, that you would bless them and touch them and undergird them, Lord. Give them the healing and the wholeness, Father, that their bodies and their minds may need. And Father, we pray for our denomination, Father, not only in America, but around the world. We pray, God, your strength. We pray for your courage. We pray, God, for your divine wisdom, Lord, to lead us and guide us as we navigate this water called life, as we navigate together, God. May you give us the courage that we need to place one foot in front of the other knowing without a shadow of a doubt, Father, that you will never leave us nor forsake us. God, you will lead us the way that we should go if we will follow you. And now, God, we're going to pray the prayer of faith that your son Jesus taught us to pray. And he said, whenever you pray, pray in this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us lift our offering.
For these gifts and all the gifts of life, we give thee thanks and praise, Almighty Father. We pray now, God, that you would take and that you would bless and that you would anoint these gifts, these small gifts that we've given back to you. God, that you would allow us to use it for the upbuilding of your kingdom. And God, will honor you and praise you. For it is in the name of the Christ we do pray. And let all of God's people say, Amen.
Amen. I love to tell the story. All right. Well, I, I was looking around and I said, boy, I don't have any children today. And I'm not my wife. My wife is sick this morning. She's been sick for the last few days. And she actually got the preacher sick as well. I was sick and I'm here now. I'm sweating a little bit, but I don't have a fever. I'm, uh, I'm okay. Uh, yeah, I see you've got your little friend with you. But I love to tell the story. Sometimes when, when folks tell us something, sometimes it sounds impossible, right? Has anybody ever told you something you thought about it and you said, oh, that just doesn't sound possible? I hear it all the time. People tell me these things. And sometimes we even say, now, I'll just have to believe that when I see it. Because it's so hard to believe. And so it is in a passage of Scripture that, that we have here in the Bible. It's a story about Thomas. Have you ever heard the story about doubting Thomas in Sunday school? We pegged a name on him, Doubting Thomas. It's a nickname that Thomas just cannot get over. 2,000 years and people are still calling him Doubting Thomas. Not Thomas the twin, but Doubting Thomas because Thomas said, unless I see. And so it was that on the Sunday afternoon of, of Jesus, whenever last Sunday, whenever we celebrated the resurrection of Christ. That evening, Jesus appeared to his disciples. And he appeared to them, and, and they were just dumbfounded. They couldn't believe. They had found themselves hidden away, locked away in a room, afraid of what was taking place around them, afraid because they had, they had seen their Savior, the one Jesus that walked with them. They had seen him put to death. And so they were afraid. But Jesus comes into the room and, and Jesus alleviated their fears, supposedly. But there was one who was not in the room and his name was Thomas. And so they got with Thomas and Thomas came back and we don't know where Thomas was at. There's, there's nothing that ever tells us where Thomas was at. But there's one thing that we do know that Thomas was not fearful because the others were cowered up into a room afraid of the Jews, but, but Thomas was out and about. And so the story goes on to say that they shared with Thomas, Thomas, guess what happened? Guess who came to supper while you were gone? And Thomas said, who? And they said, Jesus. Thomas said, get out of here. No way. You've got to be kidding me. And they said, no, Thomas. It's real. Jesus came. And Thomas said, I will not believe unless I put my finger in the scar on his side. Touch the nail scars in his hand. I will not believe. But guess what happened? The next week, the disciples were there and they were cowered up in this room and they were afraid of the Jews. But the Bible says that Thomas was there this time. And Thomas looked and what did he see? He sees Jesus coming toward him. And guess what Jesus did? Jesus looked at Thomas and he said, Thomas, Touch my side. Feel the nail scars in my hand. Do you think Thomas did it? No. Thomas cried out and said, My Lord and my God. You see, Thomas saw and believed. But Jesus said, Blessed are those who have not seen, but believe. Listen, have you ever seen Jesus? 
It's okay to talk in church. You've never seen Jesus have you. Do you believe Jesus? Why? He's a good God. Yes. But we believe we've never seen Him before. And so, as we think about that in our lives, the question is now, will you be a doubter? Or will you be a believer? A believer. Because we trust in Jesus, right? Because I see Jesus when I look in the face of all of these people who are in this congregation. When I look in your face, I see Jesus. Because the Bible says that we were created in the likeness and the image of God. And so, Savannah, when I look at you, you look like your mother. You look like her. But you also look like Jesus. And so when I look at you, I can believe in Jesus because I see him in you. And so never, ever be a doubter. But listen, I want to dispel this. Thomas was not a doubter. Thomas had more faith than any of the other disciples in the room. Thomas did not cower in the room. Thomas went out and faced the world. And so it is with the church that we need to go. and We need to face the world and be the face of Christ to those. And so always, always realize that you are the face of Christ, okay? Okay, let us pray together. Most loving and gracious God, we thank you for these, your children. God, as we look at them, we can see the faces of their mothers and their fathers. God, this human likeness, Lord, that they have is so uncanny, Lord. Beautiful, beautiful children of beautiful parents. But God, they're so much more beautiful because of their likeness with you. And so God, as we look at them, may we never, ever, ever, ever doubt in the name of Jesus. God, because we're looking into their face. And God, may they understand that and realize that and live that out in this world. That we do not celebrate Easter as an event, but we celebrate Easter as a lifestyle. And God, will give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In the name of the Christ, we do pray. Amen. God bless you. It gives me great pleasure uh, this morning to introduce to you a, a man um, who's coming this way. He's part of the Gideons. He's coming to share this morning, and I'll, I'll go ahead and alleviate your mind. I'm not going to preach after he gets through. I know some of you are saying, phew. Um, but I've invited him to come and to share. Brother Dale Dees. Uh, he's a former judge, and I'll alleviate another some of you minds. No, I've never stood in front of him. I know that was the next question. But now he's in private practice, but I've always known him as a man of tremendous faith and um, just commitment to both the law and Christ. And I thank him and uh, invite him to come now and to share with you what God has laid upon his heart. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is a day that the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Aren't you rejoicing today that he has allowed all of us to see another beautiful Lord's Day? Amen. The Sunday after Easter. What a beautiful day that it is. And we just thank him for all of his blessings, for his God's unfathomable love, Jesus is what? Big 
grace towards us Amen. in the sweet, sweet companionship of the Holy Spirit. We thank God for the Godhead and what it means in our lives. I'm Dale Dees. I'm, I'm a Gideon. I, I live over in Robinson County. Uh, I'm a member of Harpers Ferry Baptist Church. Uh, we've been back in our sanctuary for about five Sundays now. As some of you who may travel that way, my church sits right there on the river. Guess what happened? We got baptized in more way than one. Amen. Amen. But I thank you for this awesome privilege that you allow me to be with you today. And uh, um, I've been in the Gideons for some time now, for more than 22 years. And uh, you already know what the Gideons are. And so I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on statistics and so forth like that. I'm going to delve right into what the Lord has laid on my heart to share with you this morning. Uh, I'm going to share, first of all, God's Word, because that's what we're about. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, beginning with verse 6, and I'll read through the end of that chapter. But this I say, which he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. That ye always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. And just my short time here this morning, you are bound to a whole lot of good work. I, I've, I've heard a whole lot about it. Just my one short time here this morning. There's a lot of good work going for, forth here from Lomberg First Methodist. As it is written, he hath dispersed the broad, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness remaineth forever. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food, and multiply your seed sown, and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Do you know that God increases the fruits of your righteousness? We know at time at the time, there's one story at the story of how God takes the little bit that we faithfully commit to him and multiplies it, makes it so much grander for his glory. He increases our righteousness. Mm. Being enriched in everything to all bondfulness, which causes us thanksgiving to God for the administration of of this service not only supplieth the want of the saints, but it is abundant also by many thanksgivings unto God. While by the experiment of this ministration, they glorify God for your professed subjection. Do you know that there were people, there are children this size here in foreign lands who thank you, who thank you for your faithfulness and giving so that they too can have the word of God. They thank you. They look to the same heavenly Father that you and I look to. They may go to school and bare feet and have very little, but they thank God for your faithfulness that you're willing to give and to send others to want share the good news, the gospel message of why Jesus came into this world. To set us all free from our sin. He is that ransom. He is the propitiation of our sin. They want, thank God, for your obedience to his will. Unto the gospel of Christ and for your liberal distribution unto them and to all men. And by the prayer for you which long after you for the exceeding grace of God in you. In church, this last verse here, thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. My, oh, my. Isn't it wonderful to be able to share a gift with someone else? It's the gift that keeps on giving. Let me just share with you two quick testimonies, and I'll get out of your way. I'm, I'm a lawyer by trade, and we like to talk a lot. 
When I was a judge, I didn't want to hear a whole lot of talking. But now I'm a lawyer, I like to talk a lot, right? I went from one extreme to the other. Well, let me just share with you about this, this person named Ron Waldbillig from Texas. Ron was a very well-educated man. He taught doctors. He had multiple PhDs. He trained physicians. Ron was a great person, but Ron was missing something. He was missing Jesus Christ. He did not have a personal relationship with Jesus. As a matter of fact, Ron didn't even believe in God. Ron just happened to be married to a person, his wife, who, want, who was a Christian. Wow, what a dynamic household that must have been, right? He found out later that his wife had been praying for him for more than 30 years. To Ron, the body was simply a machine with many different systems as he taught his students. But Ron was confronted with his own mortality. At the age of 53, Ron found himself in a hospital himself on a gurney, being rushed in. Ron, being a very smart person, a doctor himself, he knew what the instrument readings were. He could hear the hushed whispers of the nurses. Ron found himself in trouble. Ron found himself in need of God. For the first time in his life, Ron admitted, I stand in need. I'm calling upon a God that I don't even know. Well, as they were working on Ron, Ron noticed a nurse that had a calm, very calm demeanor, much like his own wife. Ron asked her about his condition, and he asked her, why is it that with all that's going on, you can be so calm and relaxed? She shared with Ron her faith in Christ. And Ron knew then as he came under conviction, what is it that I need to be saved? She led Ron to Christ right there in the hospital room. And Ron instinctively asked for a Bible, and as many Gideons do throughout the world, and even in the United States, there was a New Testament there. Ron took it and started reading and he read about the conversion of Saul. Ron saw himself in Saul, one who had been against, one who did not care, as then to what? One who was what? Struck down. God got Ron's attention. That's what it took to get Ron's attention. Well, he came to Christ, and he told his wife the following morning, that he had accepted Jesus as his Lord and Savior, and his wife was both joyful and content. And he said, uh, well, I, I thought you would be surprised. And she said, no, God finally answered my prayers. After more than 30 years, his wife was faithful in praying for her husband. Now, Ron... Although he still teaches, he's involved in prison ministry, telling others in prison about the love of Christ. All those that he encounters in the prisons there in the Houston, Texas area. Ron's heart was healed. Sometimes the healing of the heart is not just the physical, but it's the one, the spiritual. Ron got both. He got both. That's what God can do. He gave Ron an unspeakable gift, a gift that keeps on giving. And church, I just want to thank you for your faithfulness in sharing with the world that unspeakable gift. Sometimes we just can't put it into words about what God means to us. But every now and again, he just bubbles up inside. A smile comes across your face. A song brings back remembrance of something that what? God's done for you. And we're just overjoyed inside. And we sometimes we just can't describe what 
Christ means to us or what, how God is making us feel. But one day, we'll stand before him and you'll get to share with him your very heart and your, the abundance of your heart, how you love him because he first loved us. This morning, we go to a lot of different places, and I'm proud to say, I use the word proud, pride, but I'm proud to say this, share this one testimony with you, and this is for all us old timers. I'm 60 years of age, and uh, I was a little fella, about maybe in between these right here, I think. I was nine years old when this happened. But many of you, some of you in here can remember Apollo 8. That was the first manned spacecraft to leave the orbit of the Earth, and it what? Circled the moon. Do any of you remember that? It was on a very auspicious day when they began to circle the moon. December 24, 1968. What's December 24th? Christmas Eve, right? What was 1968 like? Well, I was a little boy, but I remember it well. I was born in Detroit. Just the year before, we had experienced a big riot. And then 1968 happened. Assassinations, riots, commotion, the Vietnam War. There was want, strife and turmoil everywhere. Frank Borman and the crew mm -hmm. thought about during this time they had seen and experienced what was going on in the world, what was going on in our country. What words could they say because they were going to be televised? What could they share with the world on this auspicious moment? What could they say since all the world would be watching? They thought of a lot of different things. They thought about the story towards the night before Christmas and other poems and prayers, but nothing seemed to fit the moment. Frank called on a friend of his named Joe Layton, a writer. Joe thought about it, and Joe, something came to Joe's mind about he was in Houston at the time, because that's where mission control is. And Joe called Frank and said, I have it. Joe picked up the Bible in his hotel room that he'd been staying in and opened to Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Joe shared that with Frank. A Bible was placed there on Apollo 8, folks. Did you know that God's word left the earth's orbit and circled the moon? Why couldn't it? He's the creator of everything anyhow, right? All things are possible through him. So on that night at 9.30, now I was a little boy at the time, at 9.30, I was waiting for Santa Claus. I'll admit that. Because I was nine years old. I still believe in Santa Claus. Right? I was living in Detroit, but my parents always came down to visit our grandparents down here. And I was in bed, tucked away by then. But I remember my parents and my grandparents talking about it the next morning. About seeing or hearing the astronauts as they went around the moon. Well, the three astronauts, Bill Anders, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, each took turns reading the, fir the first, in sections, they read the first ten verses of Genesis chapter one. Sixty-four countries were tuned in to that televised event. Two billion people had access to what was being said. What does Isaiah 55, 11 say? The word that will go forth out of my mouth shall do what? Not return unto me void, but it will accomplish that 
which I purposeth. God's word was read to the, what? To the whole world. In the beginning, God created. In the beginning, God made you and I. And he made us what? Made us in his image. Thanks be to God for his word. Thanks be to God for his faithfulness. Thanks be to God to your faithfulness, to God's word. His word is able to accomplish great things. If we will just plant the seed, someone else will water. But who's going to get the increase? God will get the increase. I don't know how many farmers or gardeners we have in here. But you may notice on your little things, your little seed packets or big seed packets or so forth, you know, they may give you a guarantee about the germination date. Well, if you plant it by such and such a date, it'll come up. This seed right here, there's no expiration date on this. You plant it, it may take a while to come up, but it'll come up. Because it's what? It's God's word. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, church, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your support. God bless you. And pray for us that doors will be open so that we can place God's word so that others, too, may share in that unspeakable joy, that great unspeakable gift that you and I all possess because we, too, have passed from what? Death unto life. And know Jesus as our Lord and Savior. God bless you. Thank you.
as we prepare our hearts to leave this place, I want to remind us that I'm so proud of the organization, the Gideon organization, and those who serve so faithfully in that. Brother Dale, we thank you for that, and uh, countless others who serve in that capacity. But let us not be remiss to remind ourselves that we too are ambassadors of Christ. We're to share the gospel of Christ. No matter where we go, no matter what we do, we're to share the love of the one who gave his life for us. And so I challenge us to do as the Gideons do. The Gideons place Bibles. Let's place hope in people's lives. To everyone that we encounter, receive this benediction. May the grace and the peace of an almighty God go with us, lead us, and guide us that we may live not only in this life, but in the life to come. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit of God, we pray and let all of God's people say, Amen.